Hi guys, welcome back. So tonight I'm going to be basically talking through a particular artwork that I've recently completed. I've been doing a lot behind the scenes, I haven't really been filming pretty much everything that I've been doing. I've only been doing certain things because I find them a lot more easier to film and also because sometimes my artwork doesn't turn out right and I don't want to have that permanently on the internet. But today I'm going to be just showing you and talking you through a piece of work that I really enjoy firstly. I was quite shocked to find this kind of technique and the fact that it, it worked. Me doing a negative space drawing of one of my houseplants and I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. You know, it was with graphite, so you had like the usual mid tones to foreground and also into the background and middle area. I then kind of thought to myself, well, how am I meant to, how do I transcribe this into a piece that I can stand by itself? And it basically just kind of fell into painting. A lot of the drawings and prints that I do sometimes do go towards the painting painting direction. Sometimes it works, but probably only about 20% to 15% work. Painting for me is actually rather hard because it comes to just the way the medium works and also how you've got to use colour. You don't necessarily have to use colour, but for me it's just more difficult than a monochrome artwork, if that makes any sense at all. And eventually it started off with, well, this actually started off with a practice run. This was actually the practice painting that I started and then I very quickly realised that translating from drawing onto the painting I was just painting what I saw rather than the negative space and I was like no, can't do that. <laughs> no, there's a reason why I did the negative space because it was more interesting than drawing the actual plant I thought. So I took this approach and went with it. I just started drawing all the shape drawing, started painting between all the shapes, which are these rectangular and square and, and oblong, <laughs> uh, different shapes that you can see in a forest green, which you can kind of see peeking through bits and pieces. It started off really quite subtle, but nothing was really jumping out at me. As soon as the shapes were down, it became a lot more apparent that actually this is the direction I wanted the painting to start to go with. So behind this what originally was some brown acrylic paint. I do really like the effect of having acrylic paint on the bottom and then putting oil paint on top. I started off with the shapes, that's pretty much the basic of it. Then I started filling in. I'm, I work very weirdly when it comes to paint. I, I tend to work from the foreground backwards rather than from the background forwards. I just think it's more interesting to start off with the main feature and then you can build around it. Obviously I did go over the top of the main features as time went on because I started off with a black background then turned into a grey. This was originally a lot more whiter which then was mixed in with the wet black pigment. I then began to think about how the whiteness and the brightness of the reflection from the window onto the plant could be inscribed onto the painting and that was simple and straightforward. I just started adding white to the canvas. We're not using the usual tools. I actually used a little, used a kind of a scraper and literally just dragged it all over the canvas, the oil paint that is, making it rather textured, smooth, very versatile. Like you can see down here on this patch here that it missed bits and pieces even though there was quite a lot of pigment put down. Same on the top corner, you can actually see where the canvas is from underneath parts because it's just so thin but it, it leaves a really nice kind of mark makey. What I also do like about this piece when I found using the scraper is that you'll get lines from the underneath or any leftover paint, you will get to see them on the actual canvas. Like this is a bit more of a blob here where I've missed, somehow missed <laughs> scraping the material across the canvas. Then we've got obviously when I put paint more paint on top of the old paint, which is where you can see the green because I put this burnt umbra and burnt cyan colour on top. Because it was it was dry, 
but because I was putting it very thinly on and with a silicone nib, which is one of these, nothing too special, it's just the way I like to paint with. I don't really like paintbrushes for large canvases, I feel like paintbrushes are reserved for much more smaller canvases, so maybe half the size of this. And because of that movement and freeman, it meant the paint was thinning out, but allowed some parts of the paint to jump forward, but give a bit of depth and a bit of weird, moody character about it. It does remind me quite a lot of George Barak and Picasso's work in Cubism, where he started off not to compare myself to them, but I do think it does have those characteristics of the, you know, the cubistic lines, the lines in between where the materials are reacting and the way I've applied them and also taken away. But you've also got this element of seeing underneath the canvas, but you can see the main background, which is where I just covered up the old painting with, and then you've got the black being smeared on top, but you can still see the background again. The white on top of the brown, which again you can see brown underneath, is not blocked in, it's very loose and dragful. It just has this really nice character about it and I do really enjoy the fact that every time I look at it I'm like, oh okay, I created that. <laughs> it's a really weird feeling. So yeah, I hope that is everything that I can remember and recall from when I created this a good, I think it's three months ago, yeah, 11th of the 9th. 2020. So anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video and listened to me waffle on about a project slash a painting that I curated in the last couple of months. If you have any questions, please do leave them down in the comment section below and also don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe as well. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please let me know because I really do enjoy talking. <laughs> I do prefer instead of when I'm making the piece of artwork, I just kind of sit there make the artwork, I don't really talk, and maybe say hello, and just say quickly what I'm doing, and then carry on talking, and allow you just to watch it, making the piece of work, and then doing a proper sit down and talking, because then it's a lot more the aftermath, whereas if I'm talking during a video, I tend to get, like, I don't want to say confused, like lost in the moment, I just end up talking more than doing the artwork, and then I lose my train of thought, and I'm like, oh damn, I should have written that idea down. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I just said, I do waffle a lot. <laughs> so yeah, um, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you guys soon. Bye!